that we may be going through a difficult season as a church. That we may be going through a difficult season as a church. And it's such an honor to be here. I, I wanna thank Pastor James and Pastor Bridget, who I also love. Um, I could go, I could cry. So I'm just gonna say, I love you guys. I'm very thankful for you guys. It's an honor to be here with you guys. And we love you. Don't you love Pastor James and Pastor Bridget? We love you guys. That's right. Gateway Church settled lawsuit after multiple pastors accused of covering up sexual assault of minor. Okay, this is a shot of Gateway Church here. Just two months before Gateway Church founder Robert Morris resigned over an explosive allegation of child SA, the mega church settled a lawsuit in which at least five Gateway Church pastors and a youth leader were accused of concealing the sexual assault of a minor by another member. Okay, the initial lawsuit was filed in Tarrant County, Texas, in August 2020, on behalf of a minor identified as AD and her mother, who the Christian Post doesn't name in this piece. Gateway Church Denise Edwards and youth leader Logan Edwards were all named as defendants, along with Doug Vaughn and Gateway Church pastors Kelly Jones, Rebecca Wilson, Samantha Golden, Mondo Davis, and Sion Alford. The plaintiffs in the case were both members of Gateway and sought damages of more than 200000 but not more than $5 million. In settling the case of April 18, Gateway Church and his pastors who were accused of gross negligence and breach of their fiduciary duty to the plaintiffs and members admitted no liability and stated that they only settled the lawsuit for an undisclosed amount to buy peace. All parties having waived a jury, it was announced to the court that an agreement for settlement of all matters in controversy approved and recommended by the parties and the guardian ad litem had been entered subject to the approval of the court. The parties entered into a confidential compromise settlement agreement and released in full settlement of all claims of plaintiff against defendants. It was further announced that said compromise settlement agreement and release was being made on disputed claims against defendants and that defendants denied any liability to the plaintiff. The final judgment on the matter said, Defendants agreed to enter into the compromise settlement agreement solely to buy peace without admitting any liability. So there you have it. That is the issue. Now we're going to kind of go through some sections here and uh, kind of break this thing down a bit. But uh, your initial thoughts there. Yeah, the point where they said that they settled just to buy peace. What peace are they actually buying? Can you even buy peace? And obviously, you know, there's a reason why they settled, right? And they're giving us a reason that they did that just to buy peace. To me, I'm like, okay, you are a church. You are supposed to be all about truth. So if the case was already in court, and if you believe you guys, you were, everything is up and up, why not go through with it? And challenge that in court because it was already in court. Instead of just saying like, okay, we are settling to buy peace. Instead of like, okay, we are settling because we want to settle the case, right? But not using it as an excuse, as an off-ramp. I don't know. And then given the amount of money that they ended up uh, settling when we get to see how much the money is being spent at that church is very troubling to me to say the least. Yeah, so I think, uh, I mean, there's a few things here. So one, yes, the, the buying peace part of it is highly uh, problematic because on one end, what you have is a case where they are now simply, um, you know, 
trying to say, look, we're not guilty. The fact that they, mm. they keep saying that we don't have any liability is like, hey, we're not guilty. We didn't do anything wrong. But because some people are kind of feeling some way about it, mm. we're going to go ahead and give them $200,000 of the church's money or whatever amount it is of the church's money. Right. Let me let me say that the third time. The church's money. This is of Gateway Church's money that comes from the tithes and offerings of the members. You are going to give some of that money to somebody, yet you are not guilty. Like, are we, do they think that people were born yesterday? You know, do they think that people were born yesterday? And more so, do they think that the people who are giving this money were born yesterday? The folks who are supposed to be faithful members of the church and they're doing their duty to try to, um, you know, be faithful in their giving. And that money is now being used to settle lawsuits. And so to me, it shows, first of all, that they are uh, they're unrepentant in my eyes mm -hmm. because it, you're making you're making it seem as though you're not guilty. There's no wrong done. Yet, there is five pastors involved in this. Let me just bring this back for y'all. So, we have five pastors, right? What are their names over here? Because I was looking to, to see on their website so I can match the faces. Uh, so, we have okay. Kelly Jones, Rebecca Wilson, Samantha Golden, Mondo Davis and Sion Alfred. Um, we can try to look for them in a second. But so, you, I mean, you're dealing with five, five pastors, man, uh, who are, are being named in this issue. Mm -hmm. And and notice how it says this, right? Um, where was this? So the victim, yes, the victim identified as A.D. and her mother who the Christian Post doesn't name in this piece, and which is perfectly fine for their mm -hmm. anonymity and their own protection, and they don't need to be in the media uh, if they do not want to, okay? Um, but it is stated, okay, is this here? Okay, so it may not be in this article, but there was another news source that stated that the church did not immediately let the mother know. And this is what I believe, I, I believe it was Not By Sight News, shout out to Not By Sight News, I think he had mentioned that, that the uh, the way the church was going about, it was almost as though they didn't want the mom to know. Initially, or they didn't, they, you know, once it was brought to their attention, they didn't go straight to the mom, you know? Mm -hmm. So, this is, you know, this is really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Oh, oh, yeah, there was, uh, yeah, they said that the, the mother who didn't know was not aware. So this story was, I guess, going around, people were talking about it, because the incident took place at one of the uh, youth pastor's home. So it did stay, it must be uh, at the bottom or something. The incident took place at one of the um, youth pastor's home, and people were talking about it, I guess these are the members of the church, right? Because even this mom, as well as the, the child, they, they used to go to Gateway. So once she realized about it, she reported, which she did good, because she reported the uh, issue right away. Uh, as far as the other names, I looked on the website. I don't see their names except for one. Sion Afford is a, a campus pastor, you know, Justin Campus Pastor. So that's the only one that I'm seeing. So he's the still website. there. Yes, clear he's still there. So I don't know if they've moved the other guys someplace else. It'll be because um, they have elders and then they have pastors. I see. So on the pastor's leadership staff, he's one of the leadership staff. So that's the one that you can uh, get to see. Sion, that's the one in glasses. Yeah. So this gentleman in the uh, in the top left. He's also Corner mentioned. Here. Sion Alfred is mm -hmm. mentioned in this uh, lawsuit. Lawsuit. Yeah. The other names, obviously, you know, for some reason they're not, uh, I cannot see them on the website. So 
And I remember that uh, when we did the, uh, one of the videos, there were like some protesters outside just, you know, saying the same things like, okay, they actually do the ministry outside there because of other children who have uh, gone through this similar situation. So it looks like they have a, a li I don't know what, I don't want to call it like a lifestyle, but a precedence of always not want, coming forth with the incident because right now they're denying everything, right? But remember what happened with Robert Morris. They also denied everything and they said like, oh no, our pastor has already talked about this. Then eventually they say like, oh, okay, fine. He lied to us. So now they're saying like, okay, they don't have all the facts. So how do you, ha you how come you don't have all the facts? And yet this story uh, went to the police. It was investigated. It went to court and then it was settled. According to, uh, you know, some of the statement over there, they, uh, the police officers feel like they were hampered. They were hindering the investigation. Mm. They were teaching people like, okay, to sideline this victim, right? Just to give them cold, cold shoulders, things of that nature. So there's a bad culture going on at Gateway to me is, what, is one thing that I, I have seen. Yeah, I believe so. I think there's absolutely, I mean, it's not just a, it's a, to me, it's the level of, as you mentioned, okay, so when, when Robert Morris's issue came out, the way they acted as though, oh, like this is completely outlandish and we are, mm. this is not how we do things around here at Gateway. If we had known better, if we had had the information, there's no way we would have uh, allowed this to happen um, and, and just um, not done anything about it, right? That was how they, they uh, kind of sold the, the, the whole thing. Yet, you had a case two months before the Morris explosion, the, 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 the bombshell mm -hmm. dropped. They had a case two months before where they were willing to quietly sweep things under the rug, pay who they needed to pay to... Essentially, they're paying them to silence them. Okay, so they're saying that they're paying for peace, but it's not to, for peace. <laughs> they were paying to silence them. You know. Yeah, I believe so yeah. too. You're paying to silence somebody and to try to hopefully never hear from them again and, and carry on with your church business. And so this is what they were trying to do. And yet, when the Robert Morris came situation came about, they were acting as though they were just uh, you know misinformed. And that they handle their business biblically and in a way that actually honors the Lord when that's not actually true, you know? Yeah, because even in that way, he actually said the defendants who were ordained pastors of Gateway embarked on a concerted campaign to mm -hmm. conceal, misconstrue, and discredit the assault accusation while the active criminal investigation was going on. Defendants encouraged other members of Gateway to ostracize the minor's mother and had her removed from various ministries of which she had saved dutifully the lawsuit claims. So this was a member of the church and who was actually saving. So <laughs> they, they ended up removing her from uh, her saving, like in, in a weird way, because that's exactly what the lawsuit is, is stating. Okay, and they even sent on like uh, the minor's mom, obviously they didn't disclose the name of the minor, right? Uh, claimed they were forced to endure immense shame and embarrassment and emotional distress by the defendants who used their influence to taint the police investigation. Due to the weeks of active concealment by defendants, significant evidence of the alleged criminal assault was allowed to waste and degrade further hindering law enforcement's ability to accurately investigate the original assault, the lawsuit adds. So I don't see that this was just a coincidence, right? It's so clearly... They were, um, I don't know, manipulating, you know what I'm saying? Because they didn't want all these things to uh, come to light. So I think there's that culture at Gateway, according, because this was investigated, it was reported, right? Because these are the police officers, this is what's stated in the lawsuit. So according to everything else that's being stated in this lawsuit, we can confidently conclude that they do have a very bad culture going on over there. Even if, let's just say, they did the correct way, right, as far as this lawsuit is concerned, mm. given with what happened to Robert Morris' situation, I mean, how can we trust that this time around they honestly didn't know or they've honestly done this?
Good for school. This is going to be good. I know I had a holler back crowd coming tonight. Well, welcome to Gateway Church. I consider it to be the greatest church in the world. Not that it's a competition, but we're winning, okay? It's not a competition, but we are winning. No, thanks for being here. I, uh, it's such an honor to be in your presence. I've been here a long time. I am old, he's right. But it's, but it's I've got to preach on this platform many times, but just never on the weekend. And so this is my, actually my first time to preach on the weekend, so I'm excited about that. I, uh, I love you guys. I don't know if, you know if we know each other, if we've met each other. I've met so many of you and over the years, all the campuses and been able to travel and, and see, see so many people. But if you sit in this church, I love you. This is my home. And it's such an honor to be here. I, I wanna thank Pastor James and Pastor Bridget, who I also love. Um, I could go, I could cry. So I'm just gonna say, I love you guys. I'm very thankful for you guys. It's an honor to be here with you guys. And we love you. Don't you love Pastor James and Pastor Bridget? We love you guys. That's right. I asked the Holy Spirit what to say first because I have so many things I want to say. But based off of your response right there, what I want to say is that we may be going through a difficult season as a church. And you may have all sorts of feelings and those feelings are all fine. You can have whatever feelings you need to have. And you know, when a family goes through a season of loss, we mourn, right? That's what we do. But we do it together. And what I was hoping today was, I was hoping that if I just said that I love them, that you would join me like that. And so here's what I wanna say about you, Gateway Church. We're a family. We don't use that word a lot because we're the family of God, yes. And that word gets overplayed and maybe a little under, and it comes out sometimes like it's not, it's, people don't have a good connotation sometimes of family. But in the family of God, we can walk through anything together. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being online. It's an honor to walk this out with you. And there are great days ahead. I'm super excited for where we're going as a church. God bless you guys and thank you for being here. All right. So that was at Gateway Church uh, last Sunday, as you can see. Standing ovation for uh, Pastor James uh, uh, Morris, who is the son to Pastor Robert Morris. He's the one, you know, he's the senior pastor now. Ever since this incident took place, you know, they are on, um, they've taken leave, right? While the investigation is going on. So what they've done, they've just had guest preachers. They're the ones who have been f uh, uh, filling out the pulpit. This gentleman is actually a member of Gateway Church. So I, I take it that he's a lay elder. He's not on staff. He's just a lay elder. Last week, they also had like a visitor who was visiting and then uh, preaching. But yeah, from everything else, what we've seen over there looks like, okay, these guys are standing shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> so they're going to weather the storm. Okay, they're going to weather the storm. So this story is the second one. So who knows what else? Because remember when Cindy gave that interview, right? She did say like, hey, who knows? You know what I mean? There might be other people who are going to be coming out of Woodwick. So I guess this is the first shoe that has dropped after Cindy. Who knows what else? Yeah, um, I mean, his, uh, you know, trying to comment and, and, and just all the family talk and saying we're the best ch church in the world, like trying to encourage people like that. I wouldn't necessarily knock him for that, but I mean, you know, given the circumstances and given what, what we know is going on at Gateway, uh, I don't think he needs to be saying like they're the best church in the world. Okay. <laughs> like I, I get you trying to get your people hyped up, but you really don't need to be saying you guys are the best church in the world. Um, but Hey, I understand why he did it. Um, but yes, James Morris is sitting there in the church. All this stuff is going on. And I'll say this before we hop into comments. I mean, like James Morris 
he's getting shown this love and all that. And that's cool. I get it on that front. But then let's not forget that when this lawsuit that we just talked about was going on, who was there? James Morris was there. When this happened, oh, yes, because he's one of the said, elders, yes. yeah, that is in 20 years, yeah, yes, he's exactly. one of the elders, he was so he was there, also part of this cover up. So you can say whatever you want that, oh, you know what I'm saying, like, oh, Robert Morris is the one who put the stain on this ministry, but these guys are just faithful people doing what they do. But the James Morris was there too when they decided to quietly pay these people off and say nothing mm-hmm. about it and then act like nothing happened because. We're just doing it to keep the peace. Please, (laughs) please. All lies will be exposed. That's all. All lies will be exposed. That's all. All lies will be exposed. That's all. 